Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. Together again on the radio, I want to talk to you uh, this hour about women who are over the hill. The kind of women who are Hillary Clinton supporters, but I'm not talking about politics, but you know what I'm talking about. The dried up old bags, the old prunes, the ones who are past their prime, way past their prime. They're a bunch of bitter old broads. And um, every now and then I like to remind you boys that ultimately, if you're patient, ultimately, all the women who treat you like crap, the women who treat you like dirt, all the women who treat you like you're lower than dirt, the women who won't date you, the women who won't give you the time of day, the women who tell you to get lost, the women who threaten to file sexual harassment charges against you, you know who I'm talking about. One day, they're going to be over the hill. When I was a kid, I used to, uh, i got to tell you, when I was a child, I I used to read Superman comics. I did. And not for the usual reason that kids read comic books. I read Superman comics because I saw truth in there. And, and um, a truth, justice in the American way. That's right. And what I saw there, among other things, was the uh, the kryptonite analogy. You know, Superman had all his superpowers until he was faced with kryptonite. And while that seems uh, quaint today and it seems like, uh, you know, science fiction, which is, of course, what it was, the reality is that uh, it's a very good analogy because women have to face their kryptonite. After years of stamping their little feet, after years of being little bitches, after years of whining and crying and demanding and threatening and divorcing and taking and spending, one day, just like Superman faced kryptonite, Lex Luthor held it right in front of him and he suddenly started to practically melt. The fact is that uh, one day women hit their kryptonite, one day... They're over the hill. One day, they've got the turkey neck. One day, they are dried up old prunes. One day, the crow's feet kick in. One day, the menopausal mustache kicks in. And women don't have any of that power anymore. Without saying who it is, I knew a woman who, uh, let's just say she was the mother of somebody I dated, who at one time was super hot. Super duper hot. And then one day, finally, she she hit kryptonite. One day she realized she couldn't marry wealthy guys anymore. She couldn't date wealthy guys anymore. She couldn't be demanding. She couldn't be stamping her little feet all the time. Because one day she finally jumped the shark. One day she finally just couldn't do it anymore. It was richly rewarding to see her like It was like a fish out of water, you know. Suddenly, you ever take a fish out of water? You ever take a goldfish and maybe it falls on the floor when you're trying to move it? Um, I used to do that. I used to have a little goldfish and you a little net, and you'd, like, put him in the bathtub in cold water while he would clean out his, uh, his fish bowl. And then every once in a while, like, he would flop around, he would jump out of the net, and he would land on the floor, and he'd be flopping around on the floor. That's how women get when they can't get what they want anymore, merely by, uh, you know, stamping their feet or batting their eyelashes uh, or uh, offering up uh, their bodies or whatever. They flip out. They don't know how to handle it. And I particularly enjoy that because as men, may I tell you, as men, we don't have this problem. We don't. As men, when we get older, 
we become more valuable. Look at me. I'm making the most money I've ever made. I've got the best job I've ever had. My God, I've got the number one radio show in the afternoon in Southern California. The most lucrative radio market in the world. I follow in the footsteps of, you know, the real Don Steele, Casey Kasem, Wink Martindale, all the big name radio personalities of the past. Here I am. I, I, I have this fantastic gig. My life has never been better. I've never been more important within my field. I've never been more financially successful. Life has never been so comfortable. and Things have never been so lucrative. Never. Never, never. There are women who years ago should have paid more attention. There are women who should have said yes a little more often. There are women who should have said, thank you, Tom. I, I understand what you're doing with your life. I really appreciate this time with you. Instead of nagging, cajoling, harassing, trying to get me to sell my house, trying to get me to buy them crap. Instead of having a sense of entitlement, they should have said, you know what? You bring a lot to the table. Thank you for that. They should have done that, but they didn't. So now I'm worth more than ever. I travel more than ever, got more real estate than I've ever had before, more money than I've ever had before. There are women I knew in the past who still try to contact me. They would still love to get with me. They'd love to re rekindle what they think was there or revive the whole thing. Forget it. You had your cake, darling. Now eat it. Let it go to your big fat butt. That's right. Women are in their prime when they are young and hot. And as the years go on, and as they go, no, I'm not going out. No, I, I, yeah, this is not a date, okay? You can take me to dinner, but it's not a date. I imagine these women who, like, turn 50 and the wrinkles are kicking in and everything. I wonder if they have, like, in their minds, like an old movie montage of all the things they said to guys over the years, kind of going through their mind. I mean, you know those old movie montages, sometimes they'd be calendar pages, you know, ripping off a calendar, clocks, and the, the hands are going around and around and around to show time going backwards or forwards or whatever. And then you've got a montage of stuff that happened in the past. So I wonder if women ever actually have that in their minds, you know? I wonder if women now who, who finally have said no to a lot of good men, women who just sniffed at guys who sent them roses or made fun of them because they made an effort to be with them, or guys who were reliable and dependable but just weren't exciting enough, whatever. I wonder if women, once they hit 50, I wonder if women, once they turn into old prunes, I wonder if they have in their minds that, that like movie montage of their minds, they're going back in time and the calendar pages are ripping off, you know, March, April, May, June, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then their minds, it's like, no, I'm not going out with you. You don't make enough money. What are you, a jerk? Are you kidding me? I've been out with much better than you. I can do better than you. No, you know what? I already have a date for the prom. That's right. And you know what? I wouldn't go out with you anyway because you're a loser. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. You realize how many, I, I just wonder when women get to that old age, if they realize how many good men they've turned down. All these women who complain, where are all the good men? You know where all the good men are? You said no to them. You said no to the nice guy who wanted to take you to the prom. You said no to the guy who asked you to marry him because you thought you could do better. You said no to the guy who, uh, you know, wanted you to move in with him or... Wanted you to fall in love with him. You said no. To, you made fun of the guy, right, who sent you all those Valentine's Day cards and the balloons and the little uh, teddy bears and everything. You just said no, 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 no. And then one day you suddenly turn around and guys aren't paying attention to you anymore. <laughs> I find that so rewarding. Anytime I see these old prunes, these former bathing beauties walking around. One time I found myself at a Rod Stewart concert. Don't ask me how I ended up there. <laughs> I found myself at a Ron Stewart concert, and I, it was packed with women like this. You know, women who spent their lives hoping to hook up with rock stars. You know, they were hoping to marry the Doobie Brothers or something, and it never happened. 
And so there they were, you know, over the years, just trying to pick up with, uh, you know, Steven Tyler or whoever. And now finally, you know, you get to like uh, the 21st century, and they're at 62-year-old Rod Stewart's concert with tight jeans and some T-shirt with uh, little little uh, rhinestones that say baby or BB or something. And, and there they are, gray hair, grandmotherly looking. Still trying to be little groupy sluts. And they're end up, you know, they're going to have to marry, you know, Edgar or Oscar or, you know, they're going to have to marry uh, Joe Slob or <laughs> they're going to have to end up with the Roto Rooter man because they, they never settled for any of these guys and they finally realized they waited too long past their window of opportunity. I really enjoy seeing women suffer like that. I completely love it. And there's nothing like going to, you know, like bars in Beverly Hills, like some of these piano bars, like Maple Drive. Let's name Maple Drive as a place where some of these matronly types are out there. They've been already supplanted by the trophy wives, and they are pathetically out there trying to meet new guys. Or Mastro's, the steakhouse in Beverly Hills. There's another one where the fossils come in. These women who've already been through a couple of husbands or these women who waited too long to get married. And there they are trying to tart themselves up for the guys at the bar. They're at the piano. Oh, they're at that piano bar with Gary, the piano player there at Mastro's, who, by the way, is spectacular. And if you ever get a chance to go to Mastro's, Gary is, Gary is fantastic. But yet, it's like the Museum of Natural History, these women who are gathered around his piano. <laughs> I'm telling you, you think dinosaurs are extinct? Mastro's, tonight, go to the bar. <laughs> There's a brontosaurus with your name on her. Oh, yeah. Now they'll do anything. By the way, these same women who said no for 30 years, now they will do absolutely anything you want. And what's really funny about it is that uh, these women uh, take it as a, a compliment that guys want to have sex with them. But in reality... There's just no work involved. These women will just go home and spread their legs. You buy them a drink, and they're off to the races. That's right. So, uh, boys, don't jump on the first thing that moves. Don't jump on the first thing that looks pretty. Don't jump on the first thing that puts out. Because you're, you, you can't see the future, and you are going to be more valuable in the years to come. Do you think I could have envisioned making all this money I make and having all this success? No. Are you kidding uh, when I was a kid, I would have been happy to make $50,000 a year being a disc jockey. I would have been thrilled making a wise-ass remark every 8 or 12 songs and the rest of the time just segueing, you know, jingles and songs and slogans. And I would have been perfectly happy doing that. I had no idea we'd get to this point. And you know who else had no idea we'd get to this point? Every woman I was ever with. <laughs> Every woman I was ever with, all the ones who had the sense of entitlement, all the ones who didn't appreciate me, boys, I'm telling you, you can't see the future. Who knows how successful you might be one day? Don't be giving up when you're 20, 21, 22, 25. Don't be giving up. Adolfo is playing at Masters tonight, says Dean. What happened to Gary? Gary off tonight? It's not his night. It's not Gary's night. Okay. Don't go tonight. I can go tonight, but I'm going to see Gary. Let's go on his night. <laughs> anyway, there's nothing I love more than watching these women going down the tubes. <laughs> Isn't it great? I'll tell you something about these uh, these broads. What I call them is they're clinging on to their youth. Yes. And it's 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 kind of sad and sorry to see, but I blame movies. No, like it's them. not. I, are you kidding? It's not sad at all. It's fantastic. Well, for them it is, at least. I, you know what? My boys were 18, 19, 20, and thinking about, you know, settling down with somebody because they, they can't find chicks to go out with, they got no game, whatever. They need to go see what's at the other end of the rainbow. They need to go see these women pathetically hanging by the piano bar <laughs> to see where, they, where these girls who are saying no to them will all end up. Well, I blame movies like The Banger Sisters, crap like that. They should have called that movie The, the Longest Yard because Susan Sarandon's ass is about a yard long in that movie. <laughs> it's a horrible movie, and it, and it gives a sense of, of, like, empowerment for the ladies. They think, ooh, you know, we're 60, and we're young, and we're hot, and it's 
Goldie Hawn looks all copper and bronzed up and freckly <laughs> in the chest and just no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what chest? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out Texas A&M style? Oh, Aggie style. Oh, that that might offend people if we did that. We haven't okay. played that in a while. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com.